It's a digital cockpit simulator, a digital cinematic simulator. DCS is worthless without a built-in dynamic campaign. The community is just made up of air quakers and serial module abusers. I held sentiments like these for years after trying the sim out back in 2020. I never hated on DCS too hard and have kept pace with the updates through YouTube, but it always seemed out of alignment with my interests. That is until recently when I began flying the A4E Skyhawk on quite a few missions in DCS, which I've enjoyed supremely. So I have decided to address a burning question of mine. While I believe that DCS players who refuse to try BMS are missing out, is there any untapped potential for people like me in DCS world? I began learning Falcon BMS and DCS at the same time in early 2020. I wonder what would have happened if Chance had thrown me in with a group of DCS virtual pilots instead of the BMS pilots which took me under their wing. However, I don't think it was just chance that I gravitated to BMS after just a month in each sim. I'd owned Falcon 4 when I was younger, and the F-16 had always been my favorite jet having grown up beneath frequent flights of Vipers taking off and landing at Davis Monthan. There was the depth and focus of the sim, and most importantly the community's strong obsession with tactical and behavioral realism, which all made me naturally inclined towards the F-16 sim. And for the longest time, I rarely saw evidence that DCS had many players interested in realistic combat aviation ops. Eventually, I found YouTube videos of virtual squadrons who were on par with some of the BMS squadrons, but DCS seemed dull without the dynamic full-scale war playing out in their operations. However, a few recent experiences have made me start to dive into DCS after four years of devotion to the F-16 sim. The first was a Falcon Online TVT, where I was thrilled and terrified to fight competent virtual pilots in a campaign setting for the first time. BMS AI is scary enough, but this was truly something else. The second was the release of a high-fidelity F-15C, which slowly subverted my Viper-only mentality as the Eagle became the obvious air superiority fighter. Being primarily interested in ground attack, I went on to fly the BMS A-10, and it was then I started spending hours flying low and slow over the infamous BMS terrain. Something people, including me, often say to BMS skeptics who get hung up on the graphics is, you need to spend more time driving and fighting the jet and less time sightseeing. And now I realize how invalid this is in some, especially older scenarios. I've come to wonder if the huge population of man pads in BMS are there partly to keep pilots from flying low where they'll notice and then gripe about the ancient graphics. The third was that flying the A-10 in the campaigns without air superiority also exposed a major gap in my abilities, BFM and ACM. BMS's A-10 was my gateway plane back into DCS, as I really wanted to fly a more fleshed out version. While my DCS Hornet and Viper sat collecting dust, I learned the A-10C2 to a point where I got bored by killing the lifeless ground units. A final experience has shifted me toward flying more DCS recently. I have a growing family and my free time is naturally being shrunk. So, following the threads of my TVT experience, my new interest in historic air operations where low-level flight, combat losses, and risks were more common. And feeling crunched for time, I started flying the A-10A on the Enigma Cold War server. This led to learning the completely free, multi-role A-4E Skyhawk, doing all the same stuff the F-16 does well. Ground pounding, wild weaseling, and air-to-air, -air, but in an expedited, microcosmic version of the BMS experience. This plane and server has opened my eyes to the satisfaction I can get in small doses from DCS. You can fire up this high-fidelity, well-modeled plane in under two minutes and be at the front line of a dynamic TVT campaign a few minutes after takeoff. You can be at an enemy's airbase pulling off an Oka strike a few minutes after that. You'll find a lot of airquake and uncoordinated furballs, but it's up to you to find wingmen willing to fly with a rigid lead wingman hierarchy and use brevity. 
I don't think there's a place I could have more fun improving my BFM skills, as many players there are probably as good as it gets. The gaminess of the whole experience is much more present than even my most casual BMS flights, but I don't think the entertainment value and satisfaction of participating in a competitive fight against other people flying dissimilar aircraft can be overstated. I'm no expert in the widespread complaints about ED business practices and ethics, and since I'm simply lacking the time to become a jaded player who gets miffed by game-breaking updates, I expect to keep enjoying DCS for a long time to come. The Skyhawk will be a good stepping stone into the F4 Phantom, where I hope to slowly learn the Wizzo role. It's not that I'm waiting for the new 4.38 BMS terrain to bring me back, as the existing graphics don't bother me. I expect I'll start putting hours in again in my favorite sim in the late fall when I should have more time to devote to briefings and mission planning, integral aspects of flying in BMS. I couldn't be more excited for a flyable red aircraft in BMS, with a real flight model coming soon I hope, as I think the dynamism of TVT with dissimilar aircraft is the one area BMS should be developed without delay. As far as the question of untapped DCS potential, I'd say definitely, and I think anyone who enjoys video games as well as the more serious role-playing aspect should try out their battle-hardened BMS tactics in a TVT DCS server. Overall, it's an evolution of my preference rather than ideas about these two sims that has shifted. I believe the best hardcore combat flight sim experience goes to BMS, and I'm glad I received my education in part from some of the best people in that community. At least for me, and for the time being, the best guilt-free fun in amazing aircraft over a stunning landscape lands with DCS. Thanks for watching this and my other videos. I'm not doing this to make any money, it's just about sharing experiences, increasing community knowledge, and interesting new people in The Sims. Three proceeding to the left lane.